Good morning. This is the robot that feeds my cat, so I don't have to wake up at 5 a.m. to feed her. Oh, and also so I can go on vacation for a hot second, which is exactly what I'm doing this weekend. Hello everyone, it is day two of Vlogmas. I'm wearing my cat sweatshirt because um, Anwen has asked some very detailed questions about my cats and I thought I would answer today by talking about my first cat, Amelia. All right, so this is Amelia. So this is the story of how Amelia got her name. Um, basically, I was on my way to look at some cats at a shelter and all of a sudden the name Amelia popped into my head and I thought, ooh, it would be so cool to have a cat named Amelia, like Amelia Earhart, but just call her Amelia. Now, I have no interest in Amelia Earhart. I don't know that much about flight or being a pilot or anything. I do like strong women. But besides that, I have no connection to Amelia Earhart. That name just popped into my head. So I went to the shelter and I was looking at these two super cute little kittens. They were so itty bitty and so cute. And I just didn't really feel a bond to them in the same way that I did towards this cat that was in the lobby. So I asked more about her. Um, the sign said buttermilk. So apparently that was her name. But when I asked about her, the worker person at the shelter said, oh, well, her name's Buttermilk. Actually, when she was a foster cat, her name was Amelia Earhart, and they called her Amelia for short, which is the same name that popped into my head when I was on my way there and knew nothing about this cat and had never met this cat in my entire life. And... Basically, because I had already, like, been kind of driven to that cat, like, I was just, like, drawn to her, um, and the whole name thing matched up perfectly, like, the name on the way to the shelter that randomly popped into my head when I literally never think of Amelia Earhart was the same name that this random cat had at the shelter. I decided we needed to be together, and we have been besties ever since. So Amelia's favorite thing to do ever is to eat, uh, but we don't fat shame around here, so she can eat. It's all good. This is her favorite toy ever. Um, she likes these wand toys, specifically this one that has a mouse on the end. I was trying to capture video of Amelia playing, but this is my other cat, Lyra. She will be featured on another day's video. Okay, the last thing that I wanna say about Amelia is she has this really bizarre behavior where when she wants to play, she will grab a toy, any toy. She has a little toy box and she will let out this like piercing, obnoxious meow um, throughout the apartment as she drags the toy to you asking you to play. Um, so that is a bit of a unique behavior that she has. But she has taught it to my other cat, Lyra, who never, ever, ever used to do that and is super old. And now when Lyra wants to play, she also copies like this bizarre meow sound and will bring you a toy in the same way. It's so adorable that she has copied her. So anyway, if anyone else has more cat questions, particularly, particularly about... Amelia, because she was featured in this video today, or questions that you have about Lyra, um, which I will cover her in a future video, probably next week. Uh, let me know. Oh, sorry. I actually have one last thing to say about Amelia before I move on, and that is that she basically follows me everywhere. So if I'm filming, she is going to be right here, whether she's on camera or not. Um, when I wake up in the morning and I go to the bathroom, she also goes to the bathroom 
if I eat, she eats. If I watch TV, she literally will watch the TV with me and sometimes like actually like look back and forth like as if she is following what's going on on TV. Um, her other weird thing is that she likes to play the iPad and play games where there are like fish that she has to paw at or mice or birds or anything like that. So anyway, with that being said, let's move on to today's actual content. Um, which is focused on my book journal. So this is my new one for 2023. Last year I started one and then I never actually followed through with like coloring it in and stuff, but I'm really excited about this one and have just kind of started. So I'll show you my intro pages and then we'll get into today's official topic. So um, I started off by making a goal on how many books I want to read and this is more actually just how many would fit on this page and less about how many I actually want to read because I always set my bar super, super low. So I'm guaranteed to make it. Um, and I don't even know why I set a goal. Death by Christmas ornament. Um, but 104 fit on this page, which means two books a week. Super easy. Then... I have two pages where I'm going to document basically where um, the books are set that I'm reading or where the authors are from originally. Anyway, um, one of the things I've noticed, spoiler alert, is that my top books of the year list is a lot more international than it has been in the past. So I created this map of the world. Well, I didn't create it, I found it. And basically I'm gonna color in every time I read a book that takes place in a different country. I think that I will try and prioritize own voices from the actual country, um, but I don't think I'm gonna get super strict about whatever. So yeah, I'll just read a book, color in what country it's from. And then also same for the United States. So if I read a book and it takes place in a certain state, I will cover, color it in. Then I moved into, well, I'm gonna skip what comes next real quick because I wanna show you my book tracking. <sighs> so every year I try to not buy books. I try to read only what I own and not be consumerist and just stop buying books. And does it work? No, of course it doesn't work. Um, so I'm trying to go more the positive route this year, um, you know, which is something you would do with your students. Um, and I made this little book tracking page. Um, so you will see that there is a column for each month of the year. And then this is like the first half of the year and the second half of the year. And there are 10 little lines there were actually 11, but I don't like weird numbers like that, odd numbers. So I switched it to 10 and then I made the last one sparkly. So the sparkly one means you win a prize. So basically what I am doing in a more positive mindset is I am keeping track of all the books I own that I read in a month. So every time in January, I read a book that's already on my shelf, not from the library, not something that I bought, whatever, something that's already on my shelf, I will color in one of these boxes. And if in a month I get to the bottom line, I can earn a prize. And um, originally I was thinking that I would like the prize to be like going to a bookstore and actually picking out a book, like going to a bookstore for the purpose of browsing and buying something. And I still might do that, but the other thing I thought is it would be really cool if it was like not connected to books, like something else. Like um, later in Vlogmas, I will show you my record player and talk about some of the records I have. And like that would be really cool too, that my prize was earning a record for my collection as opposed to a book because I already have lots of books and that's the whole point is I don't need more books, but I do love books and I, anyway. So that's that. Um, yeah. Okay. And then actually I was watching Sarah's video yesterday from your true show. And I think I might copy her for the next page, 
which is that she had a list of all the books that she purchased um, or that came to her through gifts in a certain year and then she would highlight as she read them and I think that that would be a really positive way excuse me just to be mindful of reading what I own and reading what's coming into me through like Parnassus first edition book club or like the books that I read for family book club or for Dee Dee's book club um yeah I think that would just be a really positive mindset at making sure I am reading what I bring into my apartment um as opposed to being like you may not buy books you have to just live your best life without buying books anyway okay and then I created this little bookshelf and that's what I want to talk about today so um I love all of you so so much but I picked three booktubers who um I tend to agree with in some way or anyway they're each quite different why I chose them um but we are gonna start with H this little picture frame that has an H in it that is for Heather, and we are going to talk about books, basically, that she has covered over the years that I also have in my collection, and because Heather loved them, I might also love them. Now, Heather and I are a bit different. Um, she reads a lot of stuff, especially lately, that is not my jam, and I would not like, okay? Horror, mainly, um, but sometimes other stuff. I don't know she you can't you can't pin her down as a reader she just reads what she reads and it's all sorts of weird stuff however we do agree um I think on some literary fiction sort of things and also I do feel like she used to and still does a little bit read a lot of really random non-fiction like she will read a book about mudlarking in the Thames like how interesting is that digging through the mud and finding random crap or about languages and about how these guys in somewhere in South America were like trying to translate the Bible and it was not working because the language of the group of people that they were talking to had no past tense in their language and it was basically impossible to try and translate the Bible when the whole like schema or like mindset or whatever for their language didn't fit into basically the message that the Bible was trying to communicate. Anyway, she reads just really random stuff, okay? Um, so I have gone through all her videos, not all of her videos, all of her favorite videos, and I have pulled books that I already own. Um, one of them, the first one, is actually a book that I don't think was ever in her favorites video, but she mentioned it before, and that is A Tree Grows in Bo Brooklyn. This one I just hauled yesterday because my other copy had tiny, tiny font, and I was not for it, and also this cover is beautiful. So this is the book I want to get to at some point this year. And then A Little Princess, which I think I owned as a kid. I had, the, like, the 90s movie cover um, but never actually read it, and I hear it's different from the movie. Life as a Unicorn, which I've owned for a few years now, um, it is about, I think, a <clears throat> Muslim guy who is into wearing dresses and stuff. I'm not sure if they are trans or just into dresses and stuff. Um, the Rose Garden by Susanna Q. Kearsley. This author was actually recommended to me by Sarah from Your True Shelf. And then this summer when I went to the book barn with Alex, I basically like stocked up on any book that I saw there by this author. And there were loads and they were all in like really good condition. Um, so that is how I acquired the Rose Garden. And then accidentally when I was going back through Heather's videos, I was like, oh, actually she mentioned this and I already own it. And then finally... Hi, Matt, which is about a German person that moved to some other country. I'm not sure what country, but I think it's about um, being an expat and just like how you kind of live between two cultures and stuff like that. 
So those are the books that I am going to read this year, or I hope to get to this year, that were high on Heather's list. And then when Heather um, posts her favorite videos of the year, I will also see if there's anything else in my collection that she also mentioned and then kind of add it to the list. Um, the only problem is I already made my little bookshelf and um, there's only room for a few, so it actually won't quite work. Um, but basically, these are already on there and they're outlined because I have purchased stickers of the books. And then as soon as I read one, I can put the sticker on top of this little ugly box that I made. It's going to be awesome. All right, I'm going to make some oatmeal. It is like 6.30 in the morning and I'm basically done with all my blogging, vlogging content for today. But we're gonna chat a bit more. But basically, after work today, I am going to my parents' house um, because tomorrow I am going to be in Chicago again. And so I am going there today after work just to hang out and so that I'm there and don't have to wake up as early on Saturday morning um, to go all the way to their house to leave for Chicago because um, basically I need to leave for Chicago at 6.45 tomorrow morning and I'm not about to drive an hour to their house first. Okay, so tomorrow, the Chicago trip. <sighs> My mom is retired and she is a retired teacher and she has found in her community these old lady bus trips. <laughs> they basically get like a big like coach bus or whatever and um, <clears throat> they're run by this lady named Laura and she takes all these people uh, all sorts of places. And so tomorrow, the Chicago trip is not on our own, but we're going with an old lady bus trip, which is gonna be amazing because I make friends naturally with old ladies and they're my super fave. So um, basically, this is how it goes. <clears throat> you go to this place in my mom's town where you can park your car. It's right by the expressway and so lots of people like park there and then um, ride to work together. And you just wait for the bus to pull up. And then you drive a little bit and you go to this rest stop in Indiana where she lays out a breakfast spread for you and there's mimosas and all sorts of breakfast food. Um, you kind of like fill a bag, like a lunch bag with breakfast food and take it back on the bus where you have mimosas and breakfast. And then you continue the rest of the way to Chicago. And um, once you get to Chicago, you usually like go shopping or something, whatever you feel like. Um, I'm not a huge fan, spoiler alert, like I'm not a huge fan of the Magnificent Mile. You have to pay loads of taxes they're really high in the city of Chicago. And if I was gonna pay extra high taxes to shop in the city of Chicago, I would prefer just to shop in a neighborhood, which I promise will be coming later in Vlogmas. Anyway, so we'll probably be hanging out on the Magnificent Mile, shopping, living our best life. Um, we get lunch on our own, which often is Cheesecake Factory, just cause it's really easy to get in and out of. And, um, whatever they have a vegan salad I love um and then you get back on the bus and we are going to a play we are going to be seeing Wicked which I've never seen before so I'm super excited um I don't really know too much about the story of Wicked other than that I think it's told from the perspective of like the bad witch the evil witch the witch of the west I think um and yeah then you after the play, you get back on the bus and you go to some place to have dinner together and then you go home and you get home at like 10 or 11 at night. So that is the plan for tomorrow. Um, it will mostly be just a silent vlog probably of me on an old lady bus trip, but I'm way excited. I will be masking, um, you know, even though technically I'm kind of done with COVID, I will still be masking. Um, so yeah, that's that.